Hello and welcome to another episode of FE Explains. I'm Roshan Puvaya. This episode, dear viewer, has your car choices on the radar. I'm going to explain how the upcoming corporate average fuel efficiency or CAFE 3 norms will severely impact your car choices and even more how it will impact every car manufacturer in the country. Watch this video carefully as we break down how vehicle emission standards and fuel efficiency norms are calculated. And it's also why, no matter which way you look at it, eventually you're going to be getting more electrics and hybrids. Okay, so first, what are corporate average fuel efficiency norms? What standards are we following? These are different from the Bharat stage emission standards, BS4, BS6, where there are stringent specifications on multiple emission components uh, from nitrous oxide to carbon dioxide and particulate matter emissions. BS or Bharat stage emission norms apply to individual vehicles, whether it's petrol or diesel, while CAFE norms apply to the entire fleet of vehicles of a manufacturer and of the whole auto industry. Also, while BS emission norms have an objective of reducing the impact of vehicle emissions on air quality, CAFE norms aim to encourage automakers to produce more fuel efficient vehicles, including hybrids and electric vehicles, to lower the average carbon dioxide emissions of their entire fleet. It means if a car maker has big SUVs in its fleet of offerings and small cars, the smaller cars or perhaps even electrics or hybrids will have to be sold in larger numbers to average out the carbon emissions from the larger SUVs that are being sold. Now, let me explain where we are and how this works. Here are the cafe targets since 2017. Until 2022, the average carbon dioxide emissions targets for the auto industry to meet was 130 grams per kilometer. While from 2022 onwards, it has been reduced to 113 grams per kilometer under CAFE 2 norms. From April 2027, the Bureau of Energy Efficiency has suggested implementing CAFE 3 norms where carbon dioxide emissions will come down to a proposed industry average of 91.7 grams per kilometer and from 2032 with cafe 4 manufacturers will have to meet a target of 70 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer that's where it gets tough there's also a change in the way it is measured from the current modified indian driving cycle or midc to worldwide harmonized light vehicle test procedure or wltp which is a global standard. This is where makers of small cars like Maruti Suzuki find the targets unfair, calling for potentially less stringent emission targets for cars that weigh less than 1000 kgs. They want the government to come up with differentiated norms based on the size of the vehicle. Maruti Suzuki has said meeting these norms would mean small cars won't be affordable anymore. Already with safety norms coming in, such as the uh, mandatory six airbags, parking sensors, ABS and the like, car prices have shot up. That said, kudos to Maruti for getting a five-star safety rating on its new desire while retaining its fuel efficiency and affordability. It's a huge step for a company whose cars were once mocked for safety, but bought for fuel efficiency. However, many others in the auto industry, yes, those who make the big SUVs especially, say that a single uniform standard for all passenger vehicles is crucial for a level playing field. The final decision on this matter is yet to be announced by the government. Now, how are CAFE norms calculated? How do you arrive at that carbon emissions target? Here's the formula. And I'll follow that up with an example, which is 
purely mathematical, of course. You see, the goal for a car manufacturer is to ensure that their corporate average carbon dioxide emissions are below the stipulated carbon dioxide emissions target. There are three steps to calculating CAFE targets for each car manufacturer. The first is to get the corporate average curb weight for the manufacturer. For that, you have to add the total cars sold by one model, multiply it by the curb weight for that model, then add that to the total sales times the curb weight for the next model, and so on. And the total sum that you get, you divide that by the total number of cars sold. Hence here, if you have sales of lighter cars, you will bring down the corporate average curb weight. Advantage Maruti. Now for step two. Here you scale the industry average target to the weighted average curb weight of the manufacturer to get the manufacturer's specific carbon dioxide target. Under CAFE 2, the industry average curb weight has been set at 1,082 kgs, 1,082 for India. Cars are lighter at the moment, uh, have, a have a disadvantage here, as they will get more stringent targets of CO2 emissions. That's because you have a coefficient. In this case, 0 0.0457 is the number for India. That helps normalize the baseline. The factor of 0 0.0457 means that for every one kg increase in a manufacturer's corporate average curb weight above that 1082 kg baseline, they are permitted an additional 0 0.0457 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer. Then comes step three. Here you take the total number of each variant of car sold by a manufacturer and multiply it by the CO2 emissions for that specific model of car and do the same for each variant sold. Then you divide this by the total number of all cars sold. This will give you the CO2 target for the company. Now, if you make hybrids or electrics, then you get super credits. To promote green cars, the government will count a single strong hybrid car as two cars in the sales calculation. For example, which will, that will of course reduce the CO2 emissions numbers overall and help them come under the limit. Confused? Okay, now let's take two examples with Maruti Suzuki. This is not the real figures they are dealing with, but I'm just using these models to give you an idea of how these cafe norms work for a company like Maruti. The first scenario. Let's imagine a simplified scenario where Maruti sells a large car basket consisting of one Jimny and one Brezza. The average weight of this basket of cars is 1,195 kilos, average of a Jimny and a Brezza. That's 1,205 kgs and 1,185 kg respectively, curb weight. By the CAFE formula, that target CO2 emissions would be 113.1, which is the norm, plus that coefficient of 0 0.0457. This results in a target of 118.2 grams per kilometer of CO2 as that target. However, going by the available data, and it may not be accurate, actual CO2 is 140.9 plus 116.1 divided by two, which is the two cars, that's 128.5 grams per kilometer. It's higher than the target of 118 grams and the company could face penalties, but that system is not yet implemented in India. Now, how do they bring down the average? Lord Alto to the rescue, sell more Altos. Let's calculate. If they sell one Jimny and one Brezza and two Altos in a one is to one ratio, here's the results. The new average weight is 968 kgs, good. New average CO2 target, 107.9 grams per kilometer. Oops, that's a lower target than before. What they would achieve by this calculation is 110.7 grams per kilometer. That's still above the target. Long story short, they would need to sell five Altos for every Jimny and Brezza. That's a 2.5 is to one ratio of small cars to large cars to be able to pass CAFE 2 norms. And mind you, here it is a much lower target of 103.5 grams per kilometer. Now you see why the company is worried. Small car sales are dropping. And the SUV craze means it will have to come up with new solutions. That's where hybrids and EVs come in. Second scenario. 
Let's see the dramatic effect of selling just one Grand Vitara Hybrid alongside the Jimny and the Brezza, thanks to its low emissions and super credit. The new sales mix for calculation, one Jimny, one Brezza and two Grand Vitaras due to the super credits. The total vehicles for calculation are now four. The average weight of all four is 1245 kilos. This, this gives a cafe target of 120.5 grams per kilometer of carbon dioxide. Because of the credits, the actual carbon dioxide emission would be 105.6 grams per kilometer, making it comfortably past the CO2 emissions target. Maruti would not even need to sell an additional Alto to comply. Now you see why Maruti Suzuki is pushing for differentiated norms for its small cars while also investing heavily in promoting its uh, strong hybrid technology and even exploring upcoming electric vehicles. The lightweight, fuel efficient models like the Alto and the technologically advanced hybrids and electrics are crucial in different ways to balancing the company's overall emissions portfolio. But since small cars have been its bread and butter business, it's legit in its demand for differentiated norms. Across the board, electric vehicles and hybrids will help companies meet the upcoming CAFE 3 norms and even CAFE 4. Yes, the future is electric in one way or another. You and I are going to have to consider electrics or perhaps even hybrids in the interim at least. For more such insights that you could use, keep watching and reading financialexpress.com and please let me know in the comments below what you think of these fuel efficiency norms for cars.